Hello, Steve Mills here. Welcome back to the Results Podcast. It's great to be here. Now, today I want to talk to you about the importance of having professionals in your business and in your life. I'm actually sat here at the um, ferry port in Portsmouth on my way back from having an operation. There's an operation on my um, hip and uh, I had it in uh, Basingstoke and it was really I thought an important point that I wanted to make about you know having people who are professionals like the, um, uh, the the guy that did my operation in our life and in our business it, it, we, it's impossible in life to be an expert in everything and in business you know we all need experts and uh, and uh, so we do with our health you know we've got a a general practitioner that you know is 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 a good guy you know he's out there he's dealing with lots and lots of different problems um and health issues with people but we also within you know the NHS we've got experts who are experts in certain areas and uh, when it comes to needing um, an expert, it's so important for us all that they're there, whether, again, that's to do with our health, whether it's to do with our finances, our business, our marketing, and so on. Now, obviously, with me, it, it's all about, you know, marketing. That's what I do. That's what I've spent 27 years now helping and advising businesses to be more effective in their marketing. And one of the biggest problems that I find that businesses have is a lack of expertise in their business. Because if you think about it, why do people go in business? Well, they go into business generally. Either they've made been made redundant or something like that and they've been forced into it because they can't get another job. Uh, perhaps they've taken a hobby. You know, I'm a really, really into tennis, so I become a tennis coach. Or, you know, I love repairing cars, and so that's what I do, and so on and so forth. Or um, often they've gained expertise in something. Perhaps they've gone to university and... Uh, you know, they've learned to be a doctor or, you know, uh, in business they may have, um, I don't know, become an accountant or a lawyer or something like that. Now, the biggest problem that these people face is that because you're highly skilled, in other words, you're an expert at doing what I call the operational side of the business. So doing the work of a business, you know, I'm an expert at repairing cars or, you know, landscape gardening or, you know, being a solicitor or, you know, whatever it is. There's a belief that because I'm an expert in doing that, that I can run a business that does that. And the plain truth is nothing could be further from the truth. Because if you're an operational expert and you don't have expertise in finance and managing the money and understanding uh, how to read a balance sheet and being what I'd call on the ball in terms of the financial side of your business, then that's going to come up and bite you very, very hard on the bum, believe me. And um, it's so important, not necessarily that you need to be at a level where you're an accountant, but you need to be at a level where you've got a good, strong financial knowledge. Do you know, I was talking to an accountant a little while ago and they said when they did some research on small businesses and they said that when a small business owner receives their set of accounts from an accountant, what they do is spend less than five minutes looking over them and when they've looked over them, they don't understand them uh, they just assume that the accountant's got it right and uh, they sign uh, the back of them and off they go to company's house. Now, where's the value in that? There's probably some really useful information about how they be could become more profitable uh, and become more effective in their business. Now, when it comes to the sales and the marketing side, the same things apply. I talk to business owners all the time and I say, you know, how much training have you done in sales in, let's say, the last five years? And they go, well, none. 
Now, I say to them, you know, would you really employ somebody like you? Would you employ a salesperson to work in your business who hadn't even been bothered to get any training for over five years? And the answer is, no, 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 of course I wouldn't. And here lies the problem, the problem being that we're not skilled enough in the key areas of business. Now, you all know, you don't have to hear me tell you about what's happening in the media right now. You know, the media's telling us, and they're probably right, you know, that times are going to get tough. Well, not probably, um, you know, certainly times are going to get tough over the next winter and maybe even for a couple of years. So what's got to happen? What happens with most people is they cut back and and often they cut back on the very thing that's going to help them survive and that is their marketing. My advice to you, my strong advice to you is that you need to not cut back, you need to actually uh, work out what you need to do in order to make more sales. You need more sales, you need more sales in your business because that pie has shrank It's not as big as it used to be. And so you need to become better at keeping your slice of the pie. Does that make sense? I really hope it does. And, uh, you know, in an ideal world, you might even be able to grow your slice of the pie by becoming better at marketing and essentially doing more of it. You know, if you made more calls, sent out more emails, posted more often on social media, do you think you could win more business? And then if you actually improved the effectiveness of those posts, emails and phone calls, you could perhaps take it to another another level. So that's all. That's my message. That's all I wanted to say now. Um, I'm on my way uh, back to my new house on the Isle of Wight, looking forward to getting there, taking it easy today, and then getting right back into my marketing first thing tomorrow morning. So thanks very much for listening. Uh, do subscribe to my podcast. Do follow me on Uh, Twitter and connect to me on LinkedIn. Um, Also, subscribe to my YouTube channel. I'm always producing what I think is great content, lots of tips, advice, and information that would be really valuable for you in terms of sales and marketing. Uh, Thanks very much for listening, and I look forward to speaking to you next time on the Results Podcast. Thanks very much.